So this is nice that this goat is in this quadrant all by himself. This quadrant, not much going on. So maybe I'd have a little light coming through the trees and something like that. I always like to choose three primary colors before I start. And I use those primary colors for neutrals. I'm going to use quinacridone rose, but you could also use another pink. It could be permanent rose or rose matter genuine or alizarin crimson even. And then for a yellow, I think I'm going to use raw sienna for my yellow rather than a bright yellow. For the blue, I'll use cobalt. So when I combine that with these two colors and I get a gray, this is kind of a purpley gray. Now I'm looking at um, this goat and I'm seeing it's kind of a pinky fleshy color with a little of this blue dropped in. So I'm gonna start with um, this mix of mostly pink and yellow, pink and raw sienna. Now, I was tempted just now to bring some of this color onto this spool, but let's keep in mind, if it's light, keep it white. So I want to keep in mind where the lights are. I don't want to paint where the sun is hitting his face. I'm going to go right in with this blue, making more of a gray. While this is wet, I'm doing this. I'm varying the shadow color. And I'm bringing some of that shadow color right down here onto this uh, spool he's lying on. And letting the color blend with the pinky color. And this color comes right down here to the edge of this spool. And then I'm going to bring that same color down. And this is going to define the edge of this ramp. So I'm going to have some nice strong color. I added more pigment. So it's a little more purpley. So that really set that ramp off nicely. I like this color. So now I'm going to put a little detail, shadow detail on his face. Keep the white. So I'm going to leave him alone. Mm -hmm. I could have brought that color out a little bit more here to touch that line, but I'm not going to go back. When you think you've made a mistake, just keep going. Don't, don't try to fix it. That's my mantra. Otherwise, you'll just make things worse. Here, I'm going to, to bring this down, complete this shape of the spool. And there's also a, um, a board holding this thing up. It's best to make it all one hue for this so that you can make one big shape of it. And I'm dipping into that sap green. 
because I want to get a little blending here. So just putting a little, little grassy shapes here. And back to my triad. This bluish purplish color is going to dry lighter. And again, I'm defining the ramp as I go. And now I'm just going to do a warmer dark for these boards. So I mixed more of the raw sienna and the uh, pink to warm these up. So I'm varying the color here. And a little grass color will show through. This is where a number 10 comes in hand because I could make these boards really fast. I can just press down and it releases the paint and the water so I can make these slats really fast. A lot of shadow back here, so I'll strengthen my colors. Here I'm going to go into that green again so it blends where those weeds are so there isn't a hard edge between the boards and the, the grass. Now I'm coming out here for these weeds. And with this brush, I can press halfway down and I get these very rough, spiky little marks. Get a purpley mix here and touch the wet grass that I just put in. Now I am so tempted to just drag this over to here, mm -hmm. but I think I will wait. All right, so I'm going to get another dish. I'm going to use my mop. I very often just use sap green if I'm too lazy to uh, mix something special. So this is um, number 12, silver, black velvet. And so I'm going to wet my paper. So this way, when I'm painting around the goats, uh, it doesn't matter if I slow down. But I do want a nice hard edge around this ramp. So I think I'll leave this kind of dry. So my triad is not going to be dark enough for this black goat. I could just go for neutral tint. All right, so there's neutral tint. Let me just see what it looks like. Oof. All right, that's real strong. I'm going to start with my triad. 
Okay, so it's kind of a bluish neutral. It's not as dark as that neutral tint. So I'm going to paint the goat with this color and then drop in the neutral tint. So notice I'm starting at the top and working down because gravity is uh, bringing the paint down. That's how you can avoid looms. And I'm also going to be dragging this color right into the shadow, the cast shadow. And here's a shadow under the head, but it's not touching the head. Now, do I go back in with a black right now? No, I'm going to let it dry. So I'm going to do my little goat and his shadow. So with this natural bristle brush number 10, I can press down to cover a big area, really spread it around. Now there was an accidental little dry spot right there, but you know what? It's in the perfect spot for the ear. So a big part of watercolor is knowing when to leave these accidents. And now for the shadow. So now I'm going to go back to this one with my neutral tint, very dark. And uh, I'm going to have a smaller brush that's wet, handy. So maybe what I'll do is I'll wet this up here so that as I go in with this dark, it'll have a softer edge where the light's hitting it. 